What's going on guys, Sean Pierce here, Broadway Tattoo Lounge in South Amboy. Uh, if you're watching today's video, you are looking or thinking about getting your belly button pierced. Uh, there's a couple things we're going to go over before doing the piercing. This is a very important aspect in the belly button piercing. Not everybody can get their belly button pierced. So for all you parents that are watching this and your kids want to get it done, or if you're thinking about getting it done, check your anatomy before you go to a tattoo shop. I'm also going to tell you right now that not every tattoo shop is licensed to pierce. Everybody thinks they can just stick a needle through you and they're pierced. Okay, that's not the case. So make sure you check your anatomy before going to get pierced. There's two types of people that will not be able to get pierced. First and foremost, if you've had any type of surgery, such as a tummy tuck, you cannot get your belly button pierced. Okay, the tissue is drawn too taut and it's too tight for there to be a lip for the piercing. So, if you have a tummy tuck, I'm sorry to tell you, you are not suitable to get your belly pierced. Secondly, if you have an Audi, there's two types of Audis. The first one is a hardened Audi. If you look at your belly button and you see all that tissue that's pushing out, okay, if it's hardened, okay, that means it's the remnant of the umbilical cord. If you pierce through it, the infection rate is very high. For the Audi that's kind of soft, okay, that's called an umbilical hernia. If a needle goes through that, you could cause internal damage. So you need to pay attention. Don't just walk into a tattoo shop and just because you really want to get it done. If you have that and a piercer is willing to pierce you, they're not paying attention to your health, okay? I know it sucks, but you cannot get it done. The infection rate is extremely high and you're gonna run into complications. All right, so right now, I'm going to tell you guys what to expect, what to look for at the shop you're going to, what kind of equipment's going to be used, okay? Right now, this is a perfect navel to get pierced. There's a lip right at the top, okay? Jewelry will sit right here, all right? So the first thing we're going to do, as always, we're going to clean the area using an alcohol swab. After we do that, we're going to mark it. You always want to make sure that when your piercer marks you, you're standing up, okay? If you lay down, Sometimes your, your tummy might move or switch over a little, so when you stand back up, it's not gonna be straight. And straightness is always key. All right, stand perfectly straight, just like that. Now, the jewelry that's always gonna be used, most of the time, nine times out of 10, it's a three eighths, okay? There's a bunch of fancy jewelry, but the bar size should always be a three eighths. If they pierce it too, with, with too much of a short piece of jewelry, the tissue that's gonna be pierced is gonna be very thin, okay? And the way to jewelry over time, it's gonna tug and it's gonna get, it's gonna stretch and get shorter and shorter and shorter. It's not what you want. So the jewelry that's gonna be used is gonna be a 3 8 All right, go ahead, lay down right here with your head right there. As always, like I've told you before, everything you see on your piercer's tray should be in a sterile packet, okay? Forceps are gonna be used. That's to hold the tissue together for when you put the needle through. Okay. And always make sure everything is opened in front of you. This way you know it was in a sterile packet. As I've told you guys before, always make sure a cork is used, okay? Even though a piercer might think that He's been doing it for so long, he doesn't need a cork. I'm gonna to explain to you why a cork is used real quick. Okay, if once that needle goes through your skin, it can either poke your piercer or it can poke another part of your skin. So always make sure a needle, or always make sure that a uh, cork is used to prevent any kind of mistake from happening. Okay. Now the next step, we're gonna squeeze the tissue together, put the needle through, put the jewelry through. It's not a very painful piercing at all. And it's very, very quick.
Oh, no. That's a Take a nice big breath in. Big breath out. One more time. Big breath in. Big breath out. And that is it. Now, next step is the jewelry, which really is not bad at all. It'll just slide right through. When I started working here, I was like, like that. I gotta deal with that fucking and watch that. There you go. The next thing we'll do is we'll let it soak for a second. With some of uh, H2 Ocean. We'll dab it. And there is the belly piercing. Now, every time your belly is pierced, okay, you'll know if it was pierced right, you should always see a little portion of that bar right there. The ball on the top and the ball on the bottom should not be flush against the skin. If it was, it was pierced too deep. You should always make sure there's a little portion of the bar sticking out. As far as aftercare, okay, you're going to wash it once a day, okay, with a mild soap. Dove sensitive skin, best soap to use, okay. Unless you're doing some kind of activity where you're working out or sweating a lot, then wash it twice a day, okay, because if you're sweating a lot, all that sweat runs down. It takes all the bacteria and germs and dirt that's in your body and it builds up in your navel. So if you're sweating, wash it twice a day. Get some kind of aftercare. H2 Ocean, best stuff to use, okay, it's a salt water spray. At night, use this two to three times a day. At nighttime when you're laying down, do the same thing I just did. Just create a little puddle in your belly button, let it soak for like two or three minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, it's gonna take six months to fully heal. After that time, you can switch it out with another piece of jewelry, but do not switch it out before then, okay? Also, if you do switch your jewelry out, make sure you use a little bit of A and D, okay? The threaded area that goes through is actually very sharp. So if you try to thread it through or push it through without using A and D ointment, you cause a little tear inside the, the piercing channel. So always make sure you use some A and D, slide it through, change it out, but wait six months.